Howdy, it's Kyle talking about geothermal energy. This is a renewable energy source that involves using the naturally occurring heat from beneath the Earth's surface to heat and power homes and businesses. But as far as renewables go, it doesn't get anywhere near as much attention as either solar or wind. So here I want to discuss geothermal energy, what it is, where in the U.S. and on Earth is it most feasible to be used, and how can this be an important part of our energy's future. So let's dig a little bit deeper into geothermal energy. To discuss geothermal energy, we have to get a little bit into plate tectonics. So on this map, each of the black triangles are volcanoes and each of the red crosses are large earthquakes. So where you see all of this seismic activity is at the border of two plates. So when they come together, there's a lot of uplift and downthrust. This leaves the ground to be very unstable. You can get earthquakes. And as you see from this map, you can also get volcanoes. So you think about a volcanic eruption, you have a large pool of magma far beneath the surface. And Sometimes it will upwell and come to the surface as a volcanic eruption. But hot water from beneath the surface can rise to the surface as well. And where this is most obvious is in places where you have exposed hot springs. So you think about Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming and all of those geothermal features and fumaroles. Or you can go stay in a hotel in Hot Springs, Arkansas, and the hot tub in your room is just naturally occurring hot spring water. And you've probably seen images of the Blue Lagoon in Iceland. And I'll certainly get more into Iceland in this video, but all throughout the world you can see geothermal activity at the surface in places like hot springs. And when I start talking about individual places where you have a lot of geothermal activity, it's going to be basically the places where you see a lot of these triangles and crosses. Now hypothetically, anywhere on Earth can tap into geothermal energy. It's just that most places requires so much drilling, it's just not really feasible. So the areas where you can have feasible geothermal energy are going to be places where the hot water from beneath the surface isn't that far below the surface. But in terms of energy production, it's a relatively simple process. It's essentially a cycle of cooling, heating, and taking the steam from that heating, turning turbines, and generating electricity. One huge benefit of geothermal over both solar and wind is it's not weather dependent. And another benefit that geothermal has over solar or wind is less aesthetic blight. You don't have a huge number of windmills or a large field of solar panels, you just have one big building. And yet another benefit of geothermal is that it's much more efficient for heating. You can directly apply the geothermal energy to produce heat, but with solar or wind it has to be converted into electricity first. So all that sounds great, why isn't the whole world powered by geothermal energy? Probably the biggest issue is that it's limited geographically to where you can properly harness this energy. And that is very true, but so is solar, wind, and wave energy. And for that matter, so is oil, natural gas, and coal. It doesn't appear everywhere. So essentially every energy source that we know of is geographically dependent on something, such that this one is more dependent on seismic activity. But I think the biggest issue surrounding geothermal and why it's not more widespread is that it's really expensive to start up. Once it's going, it has very similar expenses to solar and wind with maintenance and other types of costs, but to get it started in the first place is much more expensive. So imagine if you're Elon Bezos and you're in your 50s, are you going to invest billions into an industry where you're not going to see any return until you're dead? So I think the field really needs young people to invest lots of money into this, people that can wait 15, 20 years for a return on investment. Well, that's as far in that direction as this channel is going to go. So now let's talk about where in the U.S. and where in the world geothermal energy is currently being used and where it can be used more. So as you can see here, the U.S. is the largest producer of geothermal energy in the world. However, geothermal is not growing as much in the U.S. as Indonesia, and it's very possible that by 2030, Indonesia might be number one. For the United States, the largest geothermal plant is the geysers in Northern California, just north of wine country. And the geysers is the largest geothermal complex in the world, and it produces 20% of all of California's renewable energy. This map here was done by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory to highlight the parts of the U.S. that have the best possibility for geothermal energy. So the areas dark red and orange are the best areas, and the ones that are white and light yellow are the worst. But you might see a big problem with this map. Look where it's very dark red. Very few people live there. But you don't have to have the dark red, dark orange areas on here to be feasible for geothermal energy. Look at northeast Texas, southwest Arkansas, northwest Louisiana, the Arklatex area. This area has already been known to tap into geothermal resources, so it doesn't have to be the 
absolute best areas, but it, it also can't be Minnesota or Florida. But look at that cluster in northern and northwestern Nevada and also southeastern California. These are two areas that have been determined to have huge levels of lithium as well as having high levels of geothermal energy potential. And so right now, lithium is known to be a very important resource in terms of making solid state batteries for electric vehicles and other purposes. So with the need for lithium rising quite a bit, the economic feasibility of doing some big drilling for geothermal might be worth it if you can get kind of a two for one type thing going where you can get geothermal energy and extract lithium. So these two spots are expected to see a lot of population growth with new jobs coming in primarily for lithium. But if geothermal energy can kind of piggyback off of that, it'd be really good. But again, that gets into geochemistry and economics, two things I am not great at. So let's talk more about the geography of it. I want to discuss two specific large geothermal projects currently going on in the U.S. One is a big subdivision outside of Austin, Texas that's going to be going with a large amount of geothermal heating. And another one is a large residential complex in Brooklyn. It's going to have over 800 apartment units and it's going to all be heated with geothermal. And both of these huge projects are currently underway. The one in Texas is going to be the largest residential neighborhood that is powered by geothermal. And the big high rise in Brooklyn will be the largest total number of homes getting heating from geothermal. And there's also been some research in West Virginia about tapping into its geothermal potential. So with West Virginia being so heavily dependent on coal, if they can switch some of those jobs from coal to geothermal without having to lose a lot of jobs, that would be really good for the state. But overall, there really isn't a lot of geothermal advancement in the U.S. And I'll get to a little bit why I think that is toward the end of the video. But I want to get into more about the geography of it and some of the other countries where geothermal is an important part of its energy resources. When you first think geothermal countries, you're probably going to think Iceland first. Over 90% of the population in Iceland gets its heat from geothermal and it's super cheap. And Iceland is basically one giant chunk of geologic instability sitting out there on the Atlantic Ocean. You got earthquakes and volcanoes and all kinds of fun stuff going on, but it does lead to a big geothermal energy potential. And one thing really cool they have there is a lot of the roads are heated with geothermal coils underneath so there won't be any snow or ice deposits. After the U.S., the largest producer of geothermal energy in the world is Indonesia. And just like Iceland, this is basically a large cluster of geologic instability. A lot of earthquakes, a lot of volcanoes, and some tsunami as well. Of all the countries in the world, Indonesia is the one that is going the most all-in on geothermal. You have well over 200 million people there, and basically everybody lives near a geothermal field. Why not? So of all the countries in the world, Indonesia, with its combination of huge population and huge geothermal potential, it makes the most sense that this would be a top producer. And by 2030, Indonesia is expected to pass the U.S. in terms of total geothermal production. The number three producer of geothermal in the world is Philippines. And a big surprise here is a cluster of islands that are all geologically unstable. Back in 2020, the tall volcano erupted. It was a major eruption. And back in 1991, Mount Pinatubo erupted another huge eruption. As of the time we posting this video, about 10% of their total electricity is produced by geothermal. So the Philippines certainly has the potential. It's big right now. And there are three new plants currently under construction. Fourth in the world in geothermal is Turkey. Only about 3% of the electricity generated in Turkey is from geothermal, but a lot of the geothermal energy is used for heating. And so here's a map of Turkey with the red areas being the ones with the highest amount of geothermal potential. And the west area, the west coast, especially around the large city of Izmir, is where you have the largest potential and the most plants in use. Fifth in the world in geothermal production is New Zealand, another cluster of seismically active islands in the Pacific. New Zealand is a country that's known to be going green as much as they can, and right now 17% of the nation's electricity is derived from geothermal. So if your country is going to have earthquakes and volcanoes and all that seismic stuff, might as well put it to good use as well. Sixth in the world in geothermal production is Mexico. And the pattern continues here, another geologically unstable region on the Pacific coast of Mexico. Only about 1.4% of the electricity in the country is generated through geothermal, and with it being Mexico, most of it is needed for electricity itself and not heating. And also, a good portion of the geothermal energy being produced in the country is for tourist sites, the places that have spas and heated pools. So with tourism being such a huge part of Mexico's economy, you can see that, but they are trying to expand a little bit to get more geothermal energy for just the regular Mexican population. 
And seventh in the world for geothermal production is Kenya. 48% of all the electricity in Kenya is generated from geothermal sources. That's number one in the world in terms of percentage. The bigger reason for this is that the main geothermal field in the country is only 44 miles or about 71 kilometers north of Nairobi, the capital and largest city. So why does Kenya have so much geothermal potential? Part of the country is located along the East African Rift Valley. This is an area where you have a lot of seismic uplifts and you have plates being separated seismically. And there are many parts of this region where you can see cracks in the earth opening up. But essentially any place along this Rift Valley in Africa has potential for geothermal energy. So now I'm going to go back to the U.S. and talk about why I think geothermal hasn't expanded as much in recent years. The U.S. Department of Energy is really pushing for more geothermal, but it isn't really going anywhere. So what I think the problem is, is, of course, politics. And why I say that is because the people that have the best ability to really move geothermal energy forward are none other than the oil companies. These are the companies that have the best drilling technology, the best ways to get way into the earth to tap into that geothermal energy. But I don't think the green renewable energy people want to get in bed with the oil companies. But if you want to push geothermal energy to the top, you're going to kind of have to. Right now, you already have some of the largest oil companies in the world investing heavily into geothermal. And in fact, one of the most prominent geothermal companies in the country is made up of ex-oil company employees that formed a new geothermal company. And like I had mentioned before, maybe with some of these lithium deposits being found in northern Nevada and southeastern California, that companies can kind of go two for one with what they're doing in these regions, just do drilling in one area to extract lithium and geothermal energy. But that's getting back into politics and economics, and that's beyond the purview of this channel. But I do think that geothermal is being underutilized in the U.S., and I hope to see it become more mainstream in the future. So that's my look at geothermal energy. I am very fascinated by this, and I do believe that in the future, it's going to be a much more important part of our energy portfolio. But for right now, it just needs a little more love and attention. But if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve. And subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography from a bit of a nerd. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out. I'd like to give a special thanks to my superior patrons for their support, especially Clara. If you're interested in supporting the channel, you can check out my Patreon page with the link in the description. And as always, thank you very much.